Divine Truth Feedback Jesus, Mary and others give personal or group feedback to people who have asked for personal assistance. Jesus and Mary give personal feedback to Sandra Tazinska on the subject of love compensation, repentance, forgiveness and prayer. The feedback was recorded on the 1st of December 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is part two. I, I think it's so wonderful that people are starting to ask questions about the laws because... Honestly, this is, these are the kind of questions we've been waiting for for a long time. Yeah, yeah. You know, most people, unfortunately, are very self-absorbed when they ask questions. But these kind of questions are um, really serious questions that have long-term consequences in understanding the answer and will affect the rest of your existence if you know the answers. And yeah, and knowledge in these areas can be applied to every area, every not just one specific problem, but to yeah. every problem or issue that you have or yeah. every desire you have, yeah. you can apply the And the discovery of the, of the framework of laws is such an important process that, that every single person should be encouraged to go through. You know, I, I feel this particular lessons about the laws should begin when a person's four or five years of age, you know, yeah. they've got the intellectual capacity to begin understanding law at that point and to begin to experiment and become sensitive and to give a yep. child just the basic knowledge of, that we're discussing here which doesn't need to be done in high high level well, language yeah i, I should mean, correct what i just said simple. because the reality is we can begin teaching the child from birth about yep. law yep. we can uh, most parents don't and that's why by the time they get to four or five years of age most children are lawless yep. they are rebellious already and because their parents haven't taught them about law and the consequences. Because there's no, there's no reflection of God's laws within the, ho the household environment that they grow up in. Correct. They are immediately at odds with God's universe. And yes. this is the responsibility of parenthood, I feel. is, yeah. You know, it's so important. To yes. So there's a lot you can do to help a child understand law before the child is able to, co to co be cognizant. But once the child is cognizant, there is a lot you can do also to teach them more about law. And so the, the, I feel a lot of the ways in which we educate children need to change quite substantially as parents. Mm -hmm. We need to be educated about how to teach children the, the consequences of law, positive and negative. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time they are five years old, that's fully established within them. So now they can be educated in a cognizant way about law in terms of more advanced principles. Yeah. And so the reality is then by the time most children got to school, they would already have a deep understanding of law mm -hmm. and a deep understanding uh, that would already be in a state where they're no longer rebellious. Yeah. Uh, they're completely open to the absorption of new information. And then uh, also they, because they've had this grounding in law, they are now understand. They can now understand, and they've also had some grounding in the in the hierarchy of law. Yeah. They can now have understanding about the deeper laws, even the laws that are beyond what we've discussed mm -hmm. at this point. You know, that are related to the perfected person yeah. with regard to reception of divine love. Yeah. Um, People want to end bullying in schools. I tell you what, that's <laughs> that's the causal way to do it. Yeah, by the time they were uh, by the time a child would arrive in school, they would already be so educated when it comes to love that you wouldn't need to give them many restrictions in terms of because they're already self-imposed responsible children. Yeah. Uh, aware that aware their own pain is is resultant. You, of their breaking law. Of their breaking law. And they won't choose to break it because they're aware of the consequences of law. Yeah. And, and uh, you, know, you, can, you know, you can educate a child by the time they're that age quite easily. And also because it's not, as long as the parent has some understanding of these laws, the entire, entirety of God's universe is a reflection of these laws in operation. So mm. it's not difficult to <coughs> give examples or demonstrate or experiment or... Mm. It's but if a, if a parent is demonstrating the rebellion to God's laws, then it obviously it's very, very hard for that parent to at the same time hypocritically <laughs> yeah. try to teach their child something different to what they themselves are practicing. So this requires parents to have gotten to the condition where they understand the law and they understand its consequences. They no longer engage in compensatory effects of law because they fully engaged with the laws of repentance and forgiveness. Yeah then of course they have the ability to teach their child such things. Yeah. Uh, under, the, under any other circumstance, their child will not understand 
because the child is getting taught directly from the parents attitudes and actions that that ignore ignorance of law is better yeah mm. yeah yeah. Mm. yeah exciting yeah well, the That's possibilities there yeah. are pretty pretty yeah. intensely uh, like the large possibilities of you know billions and billions of people on this planet having a completely different life yeah and and they're no, not needing to be anything like armaments or, you know, where we spend a third of all of our resources on the planet on war. Yeah. That wouldn't happen. No. We spend uh, the other third on, on things like disharmony and disagreement and, and yeah. all of these other things, you know, making allowances for 25 different courses of actions when one would be the most loving. Yeah. And all that wouldn't happen either. So all of a sudden we'd have you know, triple the resources available to us um, and and far more loving ways to apply them. Uh, just, you know, what we can achieve in that state is completely different to what we achieve currently. Yeah, mm. yeah, mm. very important. Okay, let's get back to Sandra. Sure. She says, I'm just translating the truth about the law of repentance and forgiveness. And Jesus speaks about how this law is for the willing soul and the law of compensation acts upon a soul that is in resistance. I am wondering whether engaging the law of compensation, which I assume is the desire to feel the pain we have caused to others and ourselves. No. So let's stop there. Yeah. The law of compensation isn't the desire to feel the pain. The law of compensation <laughs> is operating because we do not desire it's to feel <laughs> the pain. So it's yes. completely the opposite of that. Um, it's because we do not desire to feel the pain and suffering that we have caused other people and ourselves. It is that desire that creates a penalty. Yes, yeah. a part of it. Yeah. You know, obviously it's the desire to sin that creates the penalty, but part of the sin is our desire to not see the results of sin. Mm -hmm. In other words, to not take responsibility for the results of what we choose to do mm -hmm. that, are, that is out of harmony with love. You know, we're fully, most people on the planet love to take responsibility for everything that other people honour, but but most people on the planet have no desire to take any responsibility <laughs> for anything that was done. That Who is made this delicious love. chocolate cake? That was that me. That was us. <laughs> Who made this revolting yeah. chocolate cake? Nobody. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it all just came about yeah. on its own existence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the way we are with many things, unfortunately. But the law of compensation, as we've pointed out, the, uh, the operation of the law of compensation is to become, make us aware. Mm -hmm. So it's operating to make us aware. We're not aware. If we were aware, we wouldn't continue to sin. Yeah. That's the reality. Yeah. We wouldn't even want to continue to sin. Whether we had the law of forgiveness available or not, you know, yeah. we wouldn't want to continue to sin once yeah. we understood and had an awareness or an awakening to sin. Yeah. So the reality is the law of compensation's operation is to help us have an awakening to the point that we no longer want to sin, mm. that we mm. see that it's a problem, that we see that it, the solution to this problem is that we, are, we, we need to stop acting in out of harmony with love. Yeah. That's its purpose. Yeah. Yep. And, and Sandra asks, I'm wondering whether engaging the law of compensation... <laughs> Yeah, so we're she, already engaging. We're already. It's, it's, this is not a will-based uh, so, engagement. Yeah, ex it's, as soon as... The, see, remember we said with regard to the lower laws, they are all automatically in operation whether we're aware of their operation or not. Mm. There's no such thing as engaging those particular laws in, in, a, in, a, in a real sense because we are always engaging them. They are yeah. automatic. Yeah. They, yeah. they are always going to happen. The law of compensation will always operate upon a soul that has sin in it. Mm -hmm. Right, and there's only one condition where it can't do that, and that is if a higher law is engaged. Yeah. Right, yeah. and the higher law's engagement is an act of will, mm. not the lower. The lower law is You're, is there. It's present. It's forced yeah, upon us. <laughs> yes. So really, what I so let's read the full question again. Yep. Um, I'm wondering whether engaging the law of compensation, which I assume is the desire to feel the pain we've caused to others and ourselves, which is not, not can and lead... also that we can't engage it. Yeah, and we so it's firstly <laughs> we're already engaging it, whether we like it or not. not. Yeah, and the desire to feel the pain we've caused to others and ourselves is not is not present because we're engaging it. Yeah, and yeah. it's also we've not yet had an awakening. That's why the law is present. That's why the law is operating. Yeah, the awakening hasn't occurred. Hasn't occurred, and she's wondering if this can lead to engaging the law of repentance and forgiveness. 
Well, this is an interesting thing. It is. Yes, of course, <laughs> engaging, you know, the law of compensation's purpose is to lead us to the law of repentance and forgiveness if we so choose. Yeah. We, of course, it requires an awakening to sin. Yes. And the purpose of the law of compensation is to bring us to such awakening, even if we don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> whereas, whereas we could choose to, yeah. and then we'd have less compensation. Yeah. We could choose to, in, to become aware of sin yeah. and to have an awakening to sin, so, rather than just being forced upon us. Right, the law of conversation will force it upon us. Yeah, <laughs> and really, within Sandra's question, is almost the indication that so now she's saying it's almost that there might be a desire growing within her to see see her sin, see her sin. Yeah, yeah. So let's keep going with the and that desire is the beginning of an awakening yeah. to sin. So that is really, really good. But that, and that's the operation of the law of compensation. Mm -hmm. It's their purpose is to bring us to the awakening. Yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. She says, I'm just starting to realize the fact that all the pain and suffering I experience is a result of things I have done and do that are harmful to others. Mm. So I am now aware that I am experiencing the law of compensation. Correct. That is a correct statement. That is. When However, she says she's experiencing the law of compensation, any person... Is all, who has sinned is always experiencing the law of compensation, always. Yes. She just wasn't conscious of that experience. Mm -hmm. Now she has become con becoming conscious mm -hmm. that the pain and suffering is the result of the law of compensation at work yeah. and the result of her not desiring and awakening to sin. Yeah. So, so, so this is now a conscious awareness that is growing which is the purpose of the law mm -hmm. to bring us to a conscious awareness of the problem. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because often a lot of us are even want to be unconscious to the pain that we we use a lot of addiction yeah, to, to even avoid, avoid the pain that is already there and growing inside of us, yes. which is why people get more and more frantic in their addictions as they and go not, on. Yeah, and, and the addiction itself is a sin. So every yeah. time we engage it, we're sinning again and again and again yeah. and again yeah. and again. And every one of those particular things that we've chosen to do in our addiction has a consequence yeah. upon our soul and the souls of others. And, and, and if we knew and understood fully the seriousness of that situation, we would never choose to feed any addiction whatsoever, yeah. <laughs> ever. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah. yep. Okay, so she says um, she's starting to realise the fact that all the pain and suffering she experiences as a result of things that she's done and do that are harmful to others and herself, I would add in there. Um, so she's aware that she's experiencing the law of compensation. Yes. However. Well, she when, says, can we just say she's aware the law of compensation is bringing her to awareness. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not the right way to say it, how she said it. Yeah. She's saying she's aware she's experiencing the law of compensation. No, the law of compensation is having its work upon her and now she's coming to a point of awareness as a result. Yes, but I would also add that she is not yet experiencing the pain involved in the law of compensation yet either. Not yet, no, no because yeah. she continues to take actions that are out of harmony with love. So therefore, doesn't fully understand yet the seriousness of breaking law. Yeah. Yeah. So there's not a full awareness. Like as I said, there's a beginning of awareness, <laughs> which is the process that the law of compensation is 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 forcing upon her. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. However, I am still unwilling to engage the law of repentance and forgiveness. Yes. But can I engage the law of compensation, as in embrace it? by being willing to accept that it is operating on me and allowing the painful effects of breaking the laws of love to be felt. Well, yes, this is a part. So for what she's now defining is what is the part of the becoming awaken, the awakening to sin? Mm -hmm. Yes, one part of awakening to sin is actually feeling the painful consequences and allowing yourself to actually feel them rather than ignoring them. So, so yes, it's a very important process to allow the awakening process, which is an emotional awakening process to mm -hmm. occur, to see the consequences of, of the choices you're making. Yeah. And this is a, it has to be an emotional process because if it wasn't, you would never choose to change. Yeah. It has to be an emotionally painful process that, because that's a part of what's going to cause you to want to change. Yes. Right? 
uh, what I notice is that um, there's a there can be the tendency to uh, some of us have done some work on addictions and facade, for example, and we start to become sensitive to these law of compensation effects and feel kind of unhappy a lot of the time um, and sort of in pain. And yucky. Yeah, but see, as we said at the beginning of the conversation, just because you're unhappy, it doesn't mean that you have an awakening yet. That's what you I don't, to you say. don't yeah. You've got to see the relationship between your unhappiness and your suffering yeah. and the choices you're making. And that's a part of this awakening. Yeah. You can't just say, oh, I'm unhappy, oh, I'm unhappy, oh, I'm unhappy. Oh, it must, be, it yeah. must be because I'm sinning, but who knows how, yeah. you know, and, and really there's no desire to know. Um, that's the law of conversation hasn't finished its job yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't created the awakening that is required, that is going to be fully re in, required from you before you'll probably desire to stop sinning and engage a different law uh, to, to undo the harmful effects of your past sin. So the law of repentance and forgiveness undoes the painful effects of your past sin. It doesn't prevent you from, from taking on new sin. It doesn't prevent you from acting out of harmony with love tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I, and it, uh, well, uh, you know, I suppose you could say that it does in a, in a bypassing way by removing the causes of why you wanted to sin, mm. but, but that's the only way it does it. It doesn't do it by some magical process other than that. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, very important. Mm. Yeah. Okay, she says, it seems that the two laws are very much related. Yes, one is a natural love law bringing you to a point of awakening or awareness. The next one takes on from there if you choose to engage it with full knowledge. Yes. yes. So they are related. Mm -hmm. They're both about the redemption of the human soul from sin mm -hmm. to, into a state of perfection. Yeah. Mm. Is it correct to say that engaging the law of compensation, that in engaging the law of compensation, we are willing to acknowledge and feel the sin, and thus it is the first step in moving towards the law of repentance and forgiveness? Yes, but there's more involved, obviously, in the law of compensation. It's not just that we're willing to see the effect and, you know, but we're actually willing to feel the effect, mm -hmm. which, is, which is very, very different. That's a part of the awakening, feeling the effects, you know, because when you fully, it's like, uh, just if we can give an example, just recently here nearby um, in Mergen, a young two-year-old child died from a car, it was hit, was by, run, a car. hit by a car. Yeah. Imagine for a moment that you're the driver. Now, for the majority of people, if they imagined that they were the driver, imagine the terrible, sickening feeling you would have mm. of, of hitting the child it, as an accident. You, know, you didn't intend to, obviously. The child probably ran out in front of the road. Who knows what the circumstances yep. are? But, um, you know, let's say the child ran out in front of the road and, and, and you ran into the child and killed the child. Imagine the terrible feeling you would have. Mm. Um, that's uh, part of this becoming aware that something's wrong, you know, something's... Yeah. You, you, if you truly let yourself feel it, you would also be aware of the pain and suffering the parents must have and, yeah. and so forth. Of course, the pain and suffering wouldn't exist if they had different belief systems, but, but you, you know, most people on earth have the same belief systems, which are that once you're dead, you're dead, or once you're dead, it's terrible, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, rather than the lovely little child's going to Summerland and having yeah. some fun, yeah. but, and, and probably wasn't even aware of, the, of, of its own death. It just mm -hmm. had an instant transformation. But well, It wasn't an instant death, though. No, but no. It probably, it yeah. probably, if it wasn't yeah. an instant death, yeah. it would have been helped by spirits. It yes. still probably wouldn't have been in so much pain. Yeah. Um, but the reality is that you, you know, the average person on planet, planet would feel t a terrible feeling of, of, of remorse mm -hmm. uh, for doing it, and the the weight, of, the gravity of what the a, gravity of, of the action just, of taking yeah. away the opportunities that that young child had for the rest of its life. Yeah, I suppose is the best way of putting it. Yeah, by living on Earth and coming to terms with certain laws before they passed. Yeah, and uh, and you would feel that you would feel that, and you'd, you if you were fully aware. Mm -hmm. If you had an awakening to what happened, you uh, you would, and I'm not saying it might not necessarily be your sin, mm -hmm. um, 
although one could say driving a car could be classified as such <laughs> anyway, but yeah. you know, yeah. it depends on your viewpoint. But um, but you, you know, for the sake of this particular discussion, you would have a terrible sense of of, mm. the, of overwhelming sadness probably. Yeah. If and if you allowed yourself to feel it then and there, you now automatically are engaging the law of repentance. That's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. So. You, so you had an awakening, you've gone through the awakening straight away into repentance and bang, you're in repentance, you're crying about what's happened and what you've done. God, God's forgiveness comes to you at that point mm -hmm. and the whole thing's gone, right? From, it could be gone. Mm -hmm. But what most people do is not that. Mm -hmm. What they do is they have the event, they feel this terrible gut-wrenching feeling and then they bottle up this gut-wrenching feeling inside of themselves without expressing it, without feeling it, without dealing with it, without working through the grief of it or any of these other feelings of responsibility or blame or any of these other feelings. They carry those feelings around. They take actions based on those feelings that cause them to take, make further sins and so forth and so mm -hmm. forth, all while developing this greater emotional, terrible feeling inside of themselves for which they might eventually have a breakdown for 20 years later. Yeah. And that's the law of compensation at work, trying to bring them to the point mm -hmm. of repentance, mm -hmm. trying to bring them to the point of allowing their feelings about the sin or the, you know, the damage that was done to be felt then and there. Yeah. The reality is our natural instinct is to feel things then and there. Yeah. When we don't, the law of compensation has to work mm -hmm. in order to bring the condition about. What I love about that analogy you just gave is that I think a lot of people can relate to imagining themselves in that scenario and feeling that gut sick feeling mm. of I've done something wrong. And But the reality is we've done much worse to our own children probably and to other people on this planet than having just a mistaken uh, you right. know, accidental yes. death of a person on our hands. Yeah. The reality is, you, you know, we've done a lot worse things that we're not repenting for. Yeah, and that's, I suppose, what I was getting to is that that having an awareness, uh, uh, an analogy that helps us to imagine that gut sick kind of, wow, I've sinned feeling, it kind of assists us to consider what it's going to be like when we when the law of compensation has done its work properly <coughs> the kind of realization that we will have in order to begin to engage the laws of forgiveness yeah because it's going to feel like that yeah it will feel like that so we won't be crying because we're just in pain mm -hmm. anymore mm -hmm. which is what a lot of people are doing yeah they're just crying because they are in pain yeah right you know but as soon as as soon as you know, they can harm somebody else, they're up and doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> they're not crying because they've caused the pain of others. Yeah. So the example I gave, we'd be crying because we've caused the pain of others. Yeah. And we'd feel terrible because we've caused the pain of others, mm -hmm. not because of ourselves. Exactly. Now, some people under those circumstances may be crying because they're worried about getting in trouble. Mm. Now, that's a very selfish motivation and that's part of the compensatory effect. Do you understand? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be very different than actually yeah. crying about what you've done to others. Yeah. So in the case of uh, the law of compensation, it's about what you've done to others or yourself, not about what's being done to you by others. That's mm -hmm. the law of forgiveness that operates under those circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the little child hadn't, didn't do anything to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. Okay, well, I think that we've answered Sandra's question. I think so. I think we haven't discussed in this, obviously, the, as the other side of this aspect, and that is the forgiveness process of others. Mm -hmm. We've only discussed the compensatory effects regarding the repentance process. Yeah. And I feel this is where most people have a lot of trouble. Of course, most people also have a lot of trouble with the forgiveness process too. Yeah. And the forgiveness process is certainly aided by our repentance process. Yeah. You know, it's very hard to forgive somebody else for something that you're not repentant for yourself, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I'm not sorry personally for, you know, and fully seeing the effects of a decision I've made to harm you, then it's probably very, very hard for me to 
to forgive you for taking similar actions to harm me, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. um, and part of, obviously, forgiving another person is understanding the painful consequences they're going to have to go through in order to repent for what they've done. Yeah. You know, that's part of the process of forgiving them. But that's a different discussion altogether yeah. than this particular discussion, yeah. which is about specifically about the law of compensation. Mm -hmm. I should mention, though, yeah. that a person who does not engage her forgiveness of another person is automatically also engaging the law of compensation. Yes. In other words, the law of compensation will affect us whether we're in a state of repentance for what we have done or we're in a state of refusal to forgive another person for what they have done. Yeah. The law of compensation, will, if we refuse to repent or we refuse to give, the law of compensation will act upon us, getting us to a point where we have to do both. Yeah. And this is very, very important to understand. So the law of compensation's purpose is not only to bring us to a point of repentance, but also to bring us to an awareness of sin, mm -hmm. whether it has been caused by ourselves or caused by others yep. towards ourselves. Yep. So, so part of the awakening process requires that we become aware and awaken to what others have done to us, mm -hmm. as well as becoming aware and awakening to what we have done to others. Mm -hmm. And when we are aware and awakened to what we have done to others, we will probably want to repent for mm -hmm. such actions. And when we have awakened to what others have done to us, we can choose to forgive them for what they've done. Mm -hmm. Or we can hold on to it and let the law of compensation <laughs> browbeat us into a submission <laughs> <laughs> so that we no longer remember the event. <laughs> yeah. One of the two. And this is why people often say that forgiveness is sets the forgiver free because they're no longer, would you say, I should pose that as a question, that that in the act of forgiving, you are, feel freer or lighter because you're no longer in, uh, accruing penalties through the law of compensation? Yes, that's true. So when you choose to forgive another person truly and work through feeling the emotions which are going to allow you to forgive that person, in other words, you feel the emotional results of what that person did to you and you allow yourself to go through those particular feelings, then of course you've forgiven them and, and therefore the law of compensation is not bringing you to a point where you're aware of their sin towards you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's because you're already aware of it now yeah. and you've forgiven them for yeah. it. Um, the reality is there are many people on the planet who refuse to forgive others and that can be just as damaging to yourself as, as a refusal to repent for what you've done to others. Yeah. It can be just as damaging. Mm -hmm. Often... Um, we refuse completely to forgive others while at the same time expecting others to forgive ourselves. Mm, mm. And, uh, and obviously that's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so the um, law of compensation is trying to do both particular things for us. It's trying to bring us to the awakening of sin. And that sin, it doesn't matter who committed the sin, whether we had committed it or whether another person had committed it towards us or towards others we will eventually gain an awakening to the sin. And once we have an awakening sin, then we can begin engaging God's laws, mm -hmm. the, the laws of divine love, to help us work through the issues. So really, Sandra, though she's got some misunderstandings about, the engage, about being able to engage the law of compensation and the way she's phrasing it, yep. essentially she's starting to feel from her question, yeah. that, look, if I'm willing to acknowledge and feel my sin, mm -hmm. is that going to bring me closer to repentance and forgiveness? Well, it's going to bring you halfway into the law of compensation if you fully have an awakening to your own sin. It's only halfway, though, because much of your pain inside of you needs a full awakening to other people's sin towards you. Yeah. And that, that is not occurring yet. And, and this is where I also see a large amount of refusal of people on the planet. There's a large amount of refusal to see what other people, particularly their own mothers, have done to them. Yeah. And I say particularly their own mothers because there is a huge taboo mm -hmm. on the earth that mothers basically should get away with anything because they are your mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, uh, as a result of that particular taboo, many people only ever enter a state of repentance 
and they never enter a state of true forgiveness of, of their mothers because they refuse to even acknowledge that their mothers have done anything that they need to forgive. Yeah. And this is a big problem for them to in their relationship with God. If you cannot recognise when somebody has sinned towards yourself, then you are going to struggle immensely in your relationship with God because, because you are not being loving to yourself. And this is where there's a lot of uh, problems on the planet where we're willing, uh, some, uh, some are willing, to become more loving to other people, mm -hmm. but are still very unwilling to, to recognise where other people are not being loving towards them. Yeah. And, and this is a, 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 big, a big problem that is, a result, that is caused by our lack of desire to work through self-worth issues. Mm. So, so the law of compensation does both things. And so we need to understand that because it does both things, we need to both go through an awareness of what other people have done to us mm -hmm. and to see it as God sees it mm -hmm. and also to have an awakening and awareness to what we have done to other people and to see it as God sees it. Now we have had an awakening. Now God's love can flow under each circumstance. Mm. If we only have an awakening towards what we've done to other people, then of course we will only engage the laws of God's love with regard to what we've done with other people and not what they've done to ourselves. Yeah. And therefore we won't go through forgiveness of other people and we also will not have receive God's love to help us go through removing the causes of the reasons why we refuse to forgive mm -hmm. other people. And as such, that will remain within us and we will not become at one with God And while that remains within us. And in fact, the law of compensation will continue. Continuous penalties, operation. Penalties, penalties. Correct. Yeah. So... So there are penalties upon your soul for acting out of harmony with, of love towards yourself, yeah. just as there are penalties upon your soul for acting out of harmony of, with love towards others. From God's perspective, any sin towards yourself bears just the same amount of, of uh, degree as the same sin committed from you to another person. Mm -hmm. so, so we need to understand this. And, and we need to understand this if we're ever going to have any sense of worth yeah. or any sense of equality on the planet. And, and you've noticed in my own dealings with other people, when I say to other people, no, you're treating me badly now, I'm not going to put up with it, how much rage and everything yeah. is developed within that other person. Yeah. You can see the reason why most people on the planet don't deal with the problem. Yeah. Because when you start standing up for love for yourself, other people start viewing you much worse than, mm -hmm. than they do generally uh, or, or on the average level. And so as a result of that, they start treating you very, very badly, which is what most people are trying to avoid. That's one of the, reason, one of the addictions of why people don't have any love of self. Yeah. And, and so the law of compensation is going to make you aware of that too. Yeah. It's going to bring you to a state of awareness of where you're really sinning um, about your own attitudes towards yourself yeah. as well as your own attitudes towards others mm -hmm. and your own attitudes towards God mm -hmm. and your own attitudes towards the environment. Mm -hmm. And some of the attitudes we have towards the environment affect others and ourselves, but many of them affect God and God's creatures and so forth. So we, we, we need to sort of, the law of conversation is operating to bring us to an awareness of all this sin. Yeah. 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 So this is why there are some people in the Paget messages who have been mentioned who had worked with animals and killed many thousands or tens of thousands of animals in experiments and so forth, thinking they were doing a good thing for humanity. But when they pass over, they recognise the enormity of the sin mm -hmm. and, uh, and how much it was governed by addiction and other things. And they feel a deep sense of remorse towards God. You know, so that's an issue of repentance or, and the law of compensation bringing a person to an awakening of sin, but the sin didn't involve people. Yeah. And that's an example of that. Mm -hmm. So the law of compensation is a very uh, important law to understand because it's bringing us to an awakening of sin generally, yeah. uh, not just specifically with people or specifically with what other people have done to us or specifically with what we have done to other people, mm -hmm. but what but what has been done generally by the whole of humanity even is a part of this law and what is done towards God and what is done towards people and what is done towards tri children. And, yeah. and, and, you know, when you start to understand the enormity of sin and how many effects it has on so many different aspects of our environment and ourselves, 
we, we're starting to really have an awakening then. And the law of compensation is starting to have its true, you know, its true operation is starting to be felt mm -hmm. by ourselves then. Mm. Yeah. 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 And really, we don't begin to engage the way, God's way, do we, until we start engaging with these higher well, we can't engage the higher laws until the awakening of sin has occurred. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. And that's the point we made in the pa recent Paget message discussion Just we had. Right. We can't have the awakening, you know, unless the awakening has occurred, divine love cannot flow. Mm -hmm. And this is a very important point to understand, an essential part of your spiritual development, your soul-based development. Unless you want to have an awakening to this sin, the law of compensation will grind away until the awakening occurs. And once you have an awakening, you then might choose some things. But the reality is most of us can choose to have awakenings. We can start to examine things more carefully. And clear, but often we don't. We're, we're so involved in day-to-day -day life, getting our addictions met and so forth, that we don't choose to have an awakening to all of the aspects of our own personal sin mm -hmm. including particular and, and sometimes in particular the sins we commit towards ourselves which are also from god's point of view sin that we need to have and we need to have an awakening towards <laughs> yeah so so obviously the law of compensation will need to continue to work under those circumstances and we can only engage god's laws to the degree to which we've had an awakening so so if we've had a small awakening then we might have received a little bit of god's love on that particular thing but we won't have received much of god's love in every other aspect yeah but this awakening if we go back to your analogy earlier it's a it's a it's a big feeling it's not just a um, yes i see a lot of people it's not just a thought oh yes i can see oh, that i've hurt people yeah <laughs> nothing yeah. like that you will be emotionally distraught when you have this awakening mm -hmm. and you still won't be repentant you'll be emotionally distraught <laughs> that about uh, of the enormity of what uh, 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 how it hits you mm -hmm. you know it hits you it, yeah. it's like the old saying you know it's, it's like a punch in the stomach you know yeah. and that's how it, uh, the enormity of things hit you like that yeah. and um, and once you've had those particular awakenings then of course you can enter repentance mm -hmm. or forgiveness either one might need to be engaged uh, in order to receive some of god's love to help you remove the cause Right. But, but, but unless the awakening has occurred, the other two operations, forgiveness and repentance, cannot occur. Yeah. And, and obviously if they don't occur, then we're not engaging the highest laws of, uh, that govern the, the redemption of the soul. Mm -hmm. The law of compensation is a good law. It's the one of the, oh, I would classify it as one of the highest laws of natural love yeah. in, the, in that it, it's about the redemption of the human soul into a state of perfected love, mm -hmm. natural love. But it's, it's nowhere near the, the law of repentance and forgiveness, which is about the redemption of the human soul from a condition of sin into the condition of perfected perfection, divine perfection with yeah. regard to love, yeah. which is a completely different state. Yeah, mm. yeah, completely different. Mm. Okay. So hopefully we've explained to everybody <laughs> a little bit of the background, and this is some of the material that we'll be covering yep. in our assistance group that's called that's going to be about engaging God's laws. Yep. Well, there's two groups, isn't there? There's yes. one that's about understanding, understanding the laws, and, and then there's a second group that's about engaging them. So obviously some, mo a lot of what we've discussed in this group will be included in the understanding yes. uh, God's laws. We'll be talking a lot more detail about understanding God's laws. And then, of course, uh, some of the, law, the laws of repentance, forgiveness, the compensatory laws and so forth, uh, we're going to discuss the engagement of those particular laws. But clearly, unless we understand them very well, we have no hope of engaging them, which is why not, we've split Not them really, that way. with the exception of those lower laws, because yes. they are all just uh, forced upon us anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it doesn't matter what we do. Yeah, they? that's right. They're there. That's it's right. like the law of yeah. gravity. It's, yeah. it's there and it's going to be there and it's going to be <laughs> operating unless we engage the law of aerodynamics mm -hmm. we're never going to leave the ground probably <laughs> <laughs> and similarly with the law of compensation yes. it's always there happening it's always there happening it's always going to grind away 
it's going to like there's a lovely statement in the pageant message about it, it, it the teeth of the law of conversation grinding <laughs> <laughs> into a powder you know <laughs> yeah. that's exactly what it's like yeah, yeah yeah and hopefully sandra got some good info from that i'm sure she did yes yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's a great question i feel very good question it's very good to see people asking these kinds of questions because these kind of questions are demonstrating a true a more heartfelt desire to understand God's laws, God's nature, and the way God's created the universe and how you interact with it. And therefore, uh, there's a very, you know, with people asking these kind of questions, there's a much higher likelihood of them choosing to, to get into an awakened condition. Yeah. And therefore, you know, the possibilities after that are, are really remarkable possibilities after that. And you imagine if uh, a lot of people on the planet got to that condition, then, then wow, the, the planet will change very, very rapidly if a lot of people got into that condition. Yeah. So it's very good to see people beginning after seven years of teaching to ask these kind of questions. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting that it has taken seven years of teaching before the majority of people are even beginning to ask these kind of questions. Yeah. Um, so that's an indication of how resistive we are yes. to even understanding the basic principles of wanting to know how we sin yes and uh, and therefore uh, being able to become repentant for it yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. if we become aware of our sin truly mm -hmm. then we as you mentioned earlier we want to change we will change yes and often people are so afraid of change and yes the it doesn't matter how afraid you are you want to do it after you become aware it. yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you like sometimes i'm terrified <laughs> and i have been in the past you yeah. know like um sometimes terrified and and yet still engage the thing i know to be right because because the the understanding of the of the problem of sin is so great yeah. that, that you realize that there's no other course of action that makes any logical sense or that is going to result in your future happiness. Yeah. So, so it's, it's precious really to come to this, yes. this understanding of our sin and the, the enormity of sin. Really. Yes. Yeah. yeah very, it's an essential part of your development. An event, essential part of if we ever want this planet to change, yeah. it's an essential part of our personal assistance for that happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, so very good questions and we're very happy to have the time to answer them. Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Mm. We've just had a short break and there's a few follow-up questions that I wanted to add to this session with Jesus where we're discussing the response to Sandra and her questions about the law of compensation and uh, yeah. repentance and forgiveness. Yep. So I'll fire away. Fire away. <laughs> <laughs> so given what we've just talked about, mm -hmm. does my prayer to grow an awareness of my sin as in to come to the realisation emotionally of my sin, mm -hmm. does that have any effect since God's laws are already operating to bring me to that awareness anyway? Yes, but see, God's laws are operating, but your soul isn't. Mm -hmm. See, mo for most people with the law of compensation, the law of compensation is grinding away at their soul, trying to bring them to the point where they want to become aware, right? So when you start praying, remember prayer, the only kind of prayer that actually God hears is a prayer that's about having a feeling that you want to do something. Mm -hmm. It's got to be a feeling, not just a thought. So a feeling directed towards God that you want to become aware mm -hmm. is certainly going to assist your awareness. And the main reason why is because whenever we pray, it has the effect of opening our heart. Mm -hmm. Not, so in other words, before then, before we pray, generally our heart is closed. We're saying, no, 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 I don't want to be aware. No, don't tell me anything. That's what we're really saying. Yeah. When we pray, our heart is now opening. And now we're saying, yes, I want to know. Yes, I want to know. And it's a feeling. It has to be a real feeling that we want to. And of course that has a much better effect upon us because now we're open to knowing or open to seeing things that we couldn't see before. We become more sensitive to what's already happening through the laws yes but there is also it's a bit like if you can consider it's like a glass where you've got a lid on top of it that's what most people are like when it comes to an awareness of the sin yep. there's a glass with a lid on it and there's no desire to take the lid off there's no desire to open it prayer opens the lid 
and therefore allows awareness to flow or to follow. And, and so prayer is an essential part. You can engage prayer to have an awareness of your sin rather than waiting for the law of compensation to bring you to an awareness through its action. So essentially that prayer would, would be, it's a desire in my heart to become more sensitive. That's the basis of the prayer, isn't it? And there's a desire and in your heart to know from God, yeah. to know from God mm -hmm. what the sin is. Mm -hmm. right? And so in response to that prayer, does God actually respond with truth? Of course, God tells you what the sin is. Yeah. And if you're emotionally Directly. sensitive, you'll be able to feel immediately what the sin is yeah. and therefore be able to do something about it. Yeah. Yes, of course. But you, you're going to have to have the feeling, the... the well, if I, if I can give an example. Last week we did a channeling session, a mediumship session, where we talked, a spirit discussion, where we talked to a spirit who had been, um, who had died, who, who, who had died from a gunshot wound. Mm -hmm. He was a farmer in, here in Australia. And in the process of the, his death, I asked him to ask God about what God felt about how he treated his wife. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. I don't know. If, well, I don't you the really, channel, kind so of really Sometimes remember. it's hard for you to remember. <laughs> and in that process, he had this terrible, overwhelming feeling of the things he'd done wrong towards his wife. And he yeah. said he couldn't bear it anymore. Right. So in that moment, God had to told him what God's opinion of or, or gave him an awareness of his sin towards his wife yeah. in that moment. And that's separate from the law of compensation that we were already, uh, the pain from that is already in his soul. No, the, yeah, so the law it has been grinding away f right from his time he's treated his wife badly all the time. Yeah. The law has been grinding away trying to bring him to an awareness. He hadn't come to an awareness. I knew he hadn't come to awareness. And so I prompted him to ask God about giving him an awareness. Mm -hmm. And when he asked God about giving him an awareness, because he'd already asked God for some love, which, which had proven to mm -hmm. come, um, he got an answer from God about the awareness. And it was a completely different response to what he had to receiving God's love, of course, because now he saw the enormity or part of the enormity of his sin yeah. towards his wife. Yeah. And you can do that on earth. You can do that. Any person can do that. But we have to be emotionally open to God sharing with us the enormity of the, of the, of the sin we've committed. Mm -hmm. So in this sense, um, the law of compensation is the natural love law that's operating. There's pain, there's pain, there's It's grinding pain. away because we're grinding. resistive. And what we talked about earlier in the discussion is that it's designed to bring us to this awakening yes. through the pain grinding 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 and why do we need the grinding because we, <laughs> because don't, we don't want, want it. it we don't want to know what we've done mm -hmm. that's why we need the grinding yeah a person who wants to know doesn't need the grinding anymore because all they have to do is ask god and god will tell them straight away Boom. what the problem is yeah right yeah. if god doesn't tell you straight away you didn't want to know yeah. If you don't have an awareness immediately after asking God, then you didn't you want to know. know. It wasn't a real prayer. Yeah. You didn't yeah. want to know. But if you really want to know, just like that man did in that uh, mediumship session, mm -hmm. he wanted to know. He had a feeling he wanted to know. He asked God, bang, he knew straight away. Oh, he felt really bad about it straight away. Right. And it almost caused him to, to not even listen any further to our discussion, which is... I can't remember that at yeah, all. And, and, and so I had to help him through that process. But at the end of the day, he, that, that helped him become aware. So the reality is God can give you the immediate awareness of every single sin, every single one. But the majority of us don't want that. Mm -hmm. And so we need the law grinding grind away. And so in order to actually have this sincere prayer with God, the law is acting upon us. To, to try and get us to that point. But we can do the other things like s seeking more truth, even intellectually or... Yeah, but uh, if you... Like, it, see, I feel that if you're not seeking more truth just with God, then it's highly unlikely you're going to seek more truth intellectually even. Do you see? Sure. So, so, so how does one grow the desire to actually... Uh, just through the operation well of the either law. the operation of the law yep. causes you to get to the point where you want to stop everybody's your own and everybody else's pain, pain and suffering and suffering yeah. that's one way it stops yeah. and the other way it stops is by you asking <laughs> <laughs> you're just asking god you know like 
What have I done wrong? <laughs> yeah. What have I done wrong with my ex-wife? Or what have I yeah. done wrong with my children? Or what have I done wrong with whatever? And if you're really open to knowing, God will tell you. Yeah. What have other people done wrong to me? If you're really open to knowing that, God will tell you too. What have you done wrong with the environment? If you're really open to that, God will tell you. What have you done wrong with God? If you're really open to that, God will tell you. I feel like I've just set aside that. Okay, God, I've got four and a half weeks. Let's start. <laughs> What have I done wrong here? It's going to take longer than four and a half yeah. weeks. But, but the, <laughs> In quick succession. You know, the reality is that God will tell us things as, as rapidly as we can handle, as, we're, as we decide we can handle them. But we can handle it. It's just what we decide we can handle. That's why it? I said it's what yeah. we decide we yeah. can handle. Yeah. It. God designed us to handle it all. Yeah. But, but we often decide that that's not true. Yeah. And we, through our use of our will, Reju re, you know, stop the process. Yeah. God can answer every single question directly. Yeah. But God, you don't need to go through the law or any other way of finding the answer to the question. God can answer it directly. Mm -hmm. The only reason why God doesn't do that is because you don't want to know. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to know, God would already tell you. Yeah. Like, so, so it's quite easy. It's much easier than go allowing the law to... The law of compensation is is a law for people who don't want to know. <laughs> really? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Or who don't believe in God. Yeah. It's a, it's a law for either. And, and there are a lot of people who listen to divine truth who don't believe in God yet, really. Yeah. And, and the law is for them too, to get them to a point where they either decide they want to start to, try, to, tempt, to, to discover a belief in God or they want to just let the law work its way through. But, but the reality is the law itself, the law of compensation, is to bring you to an awakening with regard to sin. There's much easier ways to become an awakening, have an awakening to sin. Mm -hmm. The easiest possible way to have an awakening to sin is to ask God. Mm -hmm. The second easiest is to ask a person who's at one with God. The third easiest is to ask a person who's near at one with God. And then yeah. fourth, do you know, yeah. see what I'm saying? Yeah. The fourth easiest is to ask a person who's in a better condition of love than you are. Yeah. Right, but but these are the ways we can find out whether we have an awake and have an awakening to sin. Of course, the most easiest and the best and the most consistent is asking God. If we don't receive the answer, we already know why, because God feels that we don't want the answer. That's why. Yeah. So if we're not receiving the answer as to how we sin, then God is already telling us why. Because we're already resistive and the law of conversation is going to have to do its work. Yes, yes. And there's no way you can skip over that now. If, if, you're, not, if, you, if you're not willing to be told how you sin, mm -hmm. then who else is going to tell you? It only can come from within, from a process that, that where you recognise pain. Yeah. That's the only other way that you can become aware. Because that was the second part of the question is we have this option to ask God mm -hmm. directly, but then we're talking about the law of compensation operating, but it's operating upon us. So the pain and the penalty is within ourselves, in our soul, isn't it? It's, it's yes. pain in our own heart. So It's already there. We're already experiencing the penalty. But most of us are not experiencing emotionally. The no, because we're in of... denial of our emotions. Yes. That's a part of our problem. Yeah. 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 And that's why we have to discuss emotions because for most people, they're shutting down their emotions to such a significant extent that they even think they're not feeling pain when they are. <laughs> yeah. Well, you look yeah. at it, most of us grow old and even die without actually feeling much of the pain, pain. of it. And yeah. This is like. Yeah. Uh, it's ludicrous, really, when you think about it, how detuned we are emotionally from our own experience. Yeah. And so we need to be, have an awakening emotionally before we can even become conscious or, or aware of anything, really. Yeah. And that's why we spend time trying to help people have an awakening emotionally. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the purpose of it is that we eventually allow God mm -hmm. to tell us things that we didn't want to hear in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, and the law of compensation operates upon us because we don't want to hear in yeah. the first place and because we don't want to engage the law of repentance or forgiveness. So the first step is wanting to hear. So certainly if you ask God and it's a sincere prayer and you want to know how you've harmed other people, God will tell you straight away, straight away. Yeah. And if God's not, 
if you're not feeling anything from God straight away about the enormity of some of, of an issue, then it means that God knows that you don't want to hear it. So my my best suggestion then is to work through all the reasons why you don't want to hear what's going on. And that might be shame, a feeling of shame. You don't want to feel shame. You don't want to feel afraid. You're afraid that God might punish you now that you know you know these things. So you don't want to feel fear of punishment. And there might be other emotions. So feel those. Whatever the emotions are that are blocking you from listening and hearing God directly are the emotions you're best dealing with immediately. Because the more you can hear God directly, the less you need anybody else to progress. <laughs> And also the less you need the law to grind you into submission. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we need to have an open heart anyway to, to have had to some to emotional awakening I in agree. order to connect to God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so yes, you know, obviously the law, the compensation law is grinding us into the point where even that occurs. Yes. That's what the law is trying to do. Because we're in sin while we are denying our emotional experience. Of course we are. Yeah. Yes, because God created us to experience emotions and not shut them down. Yeah. So that is a sin to shut down your emotions. It is a sin. Mm -hmm. Most people might don't realize it, but they are sinning not only towards themselves, but they're sinning towards God in the very way they are made yeah. when they shut down themselves emotionally. So, so that's a sin. It's going to have compensatory penalties. One of the penalties is you become detuned. You can't become in denial. You t take actions unaware. That's one of the penalties mm -hmm. of that sin. Mm -hmm. and the law of compensation is trying to open you up, back up to your emotions. Most of the events that occur in your life are trying to open you back up to emotion. And, and once you're open to emotion, you have the ability to ask God and feel God's emotions about any subject. And once you can feel God's emotions about any subject, then obviously you'll progress much more rapidly than if you don't. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So a very important question is, is like, is prayer worthwhile here? Yes, of course. <laughs> prayer is the opening of your heart to God and God then has the ability to truly tell you and that's going to surely make the awakening much easier. <laughs> if you've got someone who knows the exact truth telling you the exact truth, that's a lot easier than someone knows a partial truth or no truth at all tell, trying to tell you something. Yeah. It, seem, it feels to me though that when a person has this truly heartfelt desire to understand the, their sin and its causes or, or how they have sinned specifically, the law of compensation within the soul, just the pain from that is going to be very instructive on its own, isn't it, even without God's answer? Of course, but why would you engage a law when you can engage the creator of the law? Sure. That doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it feels to me that the better course yeah. of action is to engage the creator of the law, and then you'll find out everything about the law itself. Yeah. So, so while we definitely want to teach people law mm -hmm. about the law, because it's a very, very important part of understanding their relationship with God, at the end of the day, I'd much prefer to help a person have a direct connection with God and understand the law that way than, than you know, develop an understanding of the law through the law that, through the law's operation itself. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yes, the law of compensation is operating because we're resistive to knowing from God or from anyone else probably. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why the majority of people, when we tell them, you know, they ask how, how they go and we tell them a sin that they are currently committing, they get angry and bitter and twisted with us and they never want to see us again. Well, that's how they're treating God too. They never want to see God again either. When, if, if God could share them, if God could share with them what they've done wrong, they, they wouldn't want a bar of God either. Mm -hmm. That's why they don't have a relationship with God. Mm. So, so I feel it's much better to engage the process of wanting to know. Mm -hmm. you, you can, if you want to know then God will share with you if you truly want to know. Yeah. The difference between a God and a person, though, is God will only respond when it's a sincere, heartfelt desire, yeah. whereas a person may share with you what you say you want to know but don't really want to know. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm. Well, the final question is kind of answered anyway, but it was, <coughs> is the... Is the only truly productive prayer to God for forgiveness and repentance. So 
The answer to that is no, obviously. Yeah. The, the, it's productive to pray to God at all, for all purposes and at all, on all occasions, <laughs> <laughs> and particularly in the process of the awakening, yeah. because the awakening has to occur before God's love can flow. And, and this is an important thing that we need to understand. But the transmission of truth from God yeah. comes with love, does it, it not? It comes with the awakening towards God. Like we have to first have an awakening towards God before we will allow God to tell us things. But right. the, is the way that God tells us things through uh, love? Well, once we have an awakening to God, we're automatically engaging in more loving a relationship with God. Uh-huh. So, so it's automatic now. So I feel there's, even in yourself, there's still some confusion about, no, like the reality is if I desire a relationship with God, truly desire it, then I'm already in a condition of being open to love. That's right. And I'm, but I have to get to that point through a decision that I make. Mm-hmm. God's not going to force it upon me. I need to get to the point where I'm open and willing to hear from God about every subject. Yes. Right? And, yes that's... and that openness and willingness, for sure, the law is probably going to, going to grind away there until we desire, oh, I could do this a lot easier. I could, I could just talk to God about this. And if I'm really, really open and I really want it, God's going to show me. Yeah. God will show me. And then I don't have to go through this terrible process of trying to work it out <laughs> for myself all the time. Right. So, so yes, the, like I feel that this is a part of the developing relationship with God. If you're blocked towards God, then you block off that, com- you block off that opportunity completely. Mm-hmm. And when you block off that opportunity, now you've only got the tools that God gives you yeah. because you blocked off the opportunity for the direct communication with God. You're limited to like lower laws. You're limited to Helpers, self-reliance. Spirits who are trying to help maybe you. Maybe some guides, <coughs> mm-hmm. loving people around you. But you, yep. you really and you're limited yourself, to you? about your own awareness because you're not even really wanting to know. Because if you don't want to know with God, then it's highly likely that you also don't want to know from other people. Highly likely. Yeah. So, so the best thing I can suggest to a person if they want to truly become aware of their sin and to have an awakening to sin is to first have an awakening with God. <laughs> that makes sense, right? Have the awakening with God. Do whatever you can to, to make the awakening with God occur. Your awakening, God want, God's already awake to you. Mm-hmm. you know, ha- allow the awakening from you, know, from you to God to occur. Yeah. And, and that's the beginning of your relationship with God. God now can tell you anything. The guy who I talked to through you last week, he had two only conversations with God in that conversation that we had with him. The first conversation was, did God exist? And he received some acknowledgement that God surely did exist. Mm-hmm. The second conversation he had with God was, was this issue of how did he harm his wife? And God told him how he harmed his wife. He didn't want to hear any more <laughs> after that. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. But he was a man who was shortly before in the hills. So, so he, he totally capable because he opened his heart to the possibility of receiving a communication from God and he desired it from his heart, as I described to him. Yep. And so he received it. Mm-hmm. That will be the case with everyone. Mm-hmm. It's only because we're not doing that that we're not receiving the communication. So, yeah, so, so that's the secret. So. Yep. So our blockages with God are the most important blockages we can work through from now, you know, before we do anything else. That, that's the blockages we need to work through. That's where I see the majority of people limiting themselves severely, aren't they? Yep. And you know that you're doing that yourself, don't you, babe? So, yep. you know, and, you know, we had a chat with Corny this morning as well, Cornelius, and he knows he's doing that too. And, most people are blocking this relationship with God, not understanding that the relationship with God will greatly simplify their ability to practice God's truth. <laughs> and that's, yeah. that's an important thing to remember. Yeah, and obviously the blocks are yeah, quite personal and individual they for are. each person. They are. Mine are 
going to be very different to other people. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And and but but it is so important to prioritize working through different blocks because the blockages with God once you've unblocked them will have the largest benefit on your life from that moment on than any other blockage you have. So so it makes sense and I recommend to all people that they first work on their blockages with God. Because if they don't work on the blockages with God first, then unfortunately you can't receive the help from God that God could give. And that helps instantaneous and it's always accurate. It's always truthful. It's always the truth. Yeah. And, and that's the beauty of it. Whereas if you receive information from anyone else on the planet or in the spirit world, there may be a limited amount of knowledge that can be shared. And also, um, when we're blocked to God, we're also blocked to people who are close, closer, closer to, to God. God. Of course. And so our only sources, we, we're shutting out all of our reliable sources of truth in that yeah. regard. Yes. Because if we're blocked to God, God's the most reliable source of truth. Yes. Then if we're blocked to people who are closer to God, just by nature of the fact, so Cause they of, are close to of God. whatever whatever the block with God is, will be the block with that same person. Correct. So if it's a block to love, then the we'll person closer to God is going to have a lot of love. And if we're blocked to love, we'll be blocked to that person, Correct. et cetera. Whatever et cetera. our block with God is, it will yep. come onto the person who's closer to God. But then the person who's closer to God is the next most reliable source of truth yes. next to God. Yes. And so, so we we've can't now receive truth from, that. from them. Um, Unless you're tenacious like me and I listen. <laughs> well, even then <laughs> we can't really receive it. It doesn't enter the heart. No, because yeah. we're not. See, it's the open to God. It causes, it causes our desire to open our heart. Our, our heart is open by our will, not by any other thing. It That's can't, right. Nothing can be forced upon us. So you can talk to a person who hasn't opened their heart and all they do is hear you. Yeah. They, don't, they don't, when I say hear you, they... they they basically listen. They're not listening. It's, it's, they it's just a hear you through their ears yep. and it enters their brain sometimes. But even then, it's a very difficult mm -hmm. process. And it rarely, if ever, enters their heart because their heart's not open. The heart has to be open in order for you to hear and to truly listen. Mm -hmm. and, and the beauty of opening your blockages towards God is you're now opening your heart towards God. You're opening your ability to listen and this is a very important part of any person's development. Once you have a higher ability to listen and to hear, now you have a higher ability to know what's going on and share the truth with others as well and understand the truth yourself. And, and in, the, in the point of this conversation, you have a much better ability to have an awakening to your own sin because now God has the ability to tell you what it is. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks for those additional... Yeah, no, very good questions. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Dan. <laughs>